Hi everyone, Mark Shield here, the founder of the Conducting Studio and Conductor. I want to start off this video today by talking a little bit about what I consider the dominant paradigm when it comes to conducting technique. Now, historically, if you look far enough back, conducting has come from early conductors hitting the ground with a staff to keep time audibly for the musicians. Now the action of hitting, or as it's become known, beating, shares some similarities with the actual use of instrumental technique or even vocal technique because what you're doing is you're creating a sound creating vibrations going out into the world that people can hear through the use of some kind of tension which then initiates those vibrations so the action of beating is similar to in this case striking a drum but it also shares that same notion of tension creating vibration with any other instrument, whether it's bowing a string instrument or the release of air with wind or brass instruments with buzzing and also the release of air as well. So why is that the case? Well, it just is. It's the way it's developed over time. And if you look at the, this dominant paradigm, which is that we share a similarity in that we are look as though we're trying to create sound through tension in our, in our conducting technique, you know, it, it raises questions. Why do we need to actually do it like that? Because we are not, in actual fact, creating direct sound through this action. I can't hear anything from doing that. So, if that's where a lot of the understanding of conducting technique as it tends to be taught, is rooted, well, where could it go? How could it be improved upon? And that's where I think conducting technique starts to get very interesting. And I think that's where conducting technique, as it's understood in the pedagogy of Ilya Musin, for example, starts to open up some, a different view, if you like. Because what, what we're talking about with the dominant paradigm is effectively a conducting technique which is rooted in the beats themselves. Now, the thing about that, for me, it reminds me, as I've written in the articles page as well, it reminds me of hitting a hockey puck. You know, I'm saying I'm playing hockey and I, and I hit, hit it, hit the, hit the hockey puck. From the moment that I've hit it, I release control. I'm no longer connected to it. It's off. <laughs> the next moment that I'm going to have any sense of contact or connection with the, the puck is when I run up to it and hit it again. But it's, it's a continual process of hit and then detachment. I no longer have any sense of internal control, control or connection with the hockey puck. That's a little bit what like beating is like. It's like push, release, push, release. But it means we are between those moments disconnected from the flow of the music. How can we fix that? How can we do better than that? Because if I was able to get in between those beats, get involved with what was happening in the notes between the beats or the rhythm if you like and be able to manipulate that influence it then my conducting becomes a whole nother kettle of fish a whole a whole range of other possibilities open up because let's face it between the beats inside the music itself is where all the action is whether it's the rhythm itself the dynamics the character all that kind of stuff is going to exist in the music itself not just in those moments where we hit the plane through beating. So I want to give you a number of exercises in these next few videos that start to explore the internal world of rhythm. What happens between these beats and how you can develop your conducting to tangibly and uh, observably be conducting and shaping internal rhythm of the music. That's where conducting technique is fascinating. That's what some of these videos and now I'm going to introduce you to.